Welcome back once again, Space Coast Eats. Space Coast Eats, the delicious podcast where we discover all kinds of dining, cuisine, we talk events, and everything else here on the Space Coast regarding the things we love to do the most. Eat, drink, and have a great time, right? So I am super excited for this episode. We have uh, Cadillac Cove. It's uh, a new concept in Satellite Beach. And I have both uh, Sabrina and Steven in the studio. We're going to talk both the bar concept, the food concept, and the live music concept. Because it has, what, one stage outside, another stage inside. Correct. Tons of dining yep. space. Tons of uh, tiki bar uh, outside on the deck space. And um, it, it, listen, I mean, that, that uh, the history of the building alone, I think everybody knows it as one of the landmarks in Satellite Beach. And so we're going to discover all kinds of things. And, and firstly, Stephen, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me again, man. It's, it's been a minute since we've uh, we've hung out and talked in the studio. It's been a while. Thanks for having me in. Man, 100%. Um, and you brought the bar with you. I thought we were just going to talk food, and now we have Sabrina with the bar. She's yes, going to talk do. about that concept. And, um, and I think we have a lot to explore. So we're going to get started yeah. again. Thank you for, so much for tuning in. Uh, as always, we ask that you uh, share, you give us a like, and of course, we're always down for answering your questions and comments, so make sure you um, just ask away, and uh, we'll, we'll always be happy to uh, go ahead and uh, address those concerns, comments, anything else you have going on. Uh, we always look for, as well, uh, anything that you know about that we should cover, so just uh, yeah, get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. So, Cadillac Cove. Did you plan on getting back in the restaurant business? It's always there. <laughs> it's always there. <laughs> it's always there. You know, I grew up in it, started when I was 12. Right. And uh, so when I got out of it for a while to uh, teach, mm -hmm. um, it's just always there. And it's what's the best opportunity, what's going to make me leave something else that I love to do. Right. Uh, and the opportunities that I had there, uh, what's going to be grand enough for me to jump it takes a lot yeah. because come out of retirement as, as somebody who has done that and I've had to think twice about getting even, you know, because I've spent a lot of time. I talk about it on the show all the time. I spent a lot of time in management, behind the bar, front of house, back mm -hmm. of house. And, uh, and there's, I don't think there's anything I haven't done in a restaurant. So um, I know for me, I mean, it'd have to be like one heck of a good offer, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, yeah. or, you know, or like complete control. Like I don't, I don't want anybody like – I'm making decisions because I just feel like I know how to run a dining room and that's all I would really do. You know, like the maitre d' that, you know, that, that kind of person who just welcomes you in, gets you the perfect table, gets you the perfect server, uh, highlights some of our specials and, 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 you know, really puts just a good vibe, right. a good, you know, sense of like, wow, I belong here. I'm welcomed here and I'm ready to have a good time, you and, know, spend and, some money. And that's what it's time. all about. Right. I think yeah. you just got our, uh, our slogan for us right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Completely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I do that, too. I do some marketing. Um, <laughs> no, first and foremost, though, um, why the name Cadillac Cove? It was known, like when I bartended there, long story short, um, it was a cove. Mm -hmm. And it was like it had been the cove for so many, it was a landmark. Right. So why the Cadillac Cove? Well, we did want to, uh, you know, play into the history a bit. A little homage. A little homage. Yes. Uh, Sabrina, you want to talk a little more on it? Same. We are bringing back the old cove just with a twist our own way. Nice. Right. It's, you know, you go, you get your, you know, what is it? Cadillac Margarita, Cadillac. You know, this is the Cadillac Cove. It's the mm -hmm. cove that you, you've you always wanted. You were remembering. Um, you wanted it to come back. But, you know, it's Cadillac now. We're, we're, we're bringing it up a little bit bringing it back to uh 2023 and um, i like that you know hopefully we can meet the needs of those that remember the cove but also introduce you know that that type of feeling to uh the younger generation coming up i was gonna say it's not your grandparents cove yeah it's, yeah. Not, it's not the cove that they grew up with um certainly you know just just one of the biggest changes is it's smoke free inside yeah. um and with those uh, smoking ordinances back in the day, the cove well, used to be a hop in place. Right. But then them and a couple other ones, Dove and a couple other ones, um, 
they were known for their lounge and bar atmosphere. But that smoking just kind of, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people that just didn't return. And then there was a little bit of, you know, little demise, hurricanes come, you know, ownership changes. Some people were able to resurrect and take care and be good stewards of the property. Others kind of let it fall into disrepair. You know, restaurants always have that kind of cycle, you know, where they're hot and then they kind of get it. And now, you know, and then it's up to somebody else to kind of like re- imagine what that space can be well and you brought up the elements and that's you know beachside that's a big struggle with any yeah. you know space over there is yeah. you know if you have old and beachside right. you know you're dealing with a level of always having to be on every aspect of you know you have to keep track of your you know your uh, your systems your yeah. electric your all that because it, it in a day it could all you know go up and being a uh across the street from the beach yeah. you're susceptible salt. to that salt air salt is brutal. Basically, your refrigeration yep. always getting compromised that's yep. always something in all those lines and again this is something that industry people would know so you know that's kind of who i'm talking to like yeah that stuff is brutal yeah on you know all, all those systems let's talk more about the tiki hut is that thatch it is well I'm, yeah. yeah the tiki hut yeah yeah it's a thatch the um it's actually a design from alaska Wow, the guy that because it's uh, super tall. It's like the tallest yeah. tiki in Brevard County. Yes, it right. is. Yeah, yeah. The guy that put it together um, spent time in Alaska building those wow. with uh, you know indigenous people out there. And when he got his own opportunity for a building, mm. he's like, "I'm doing it." And that's uh, awesome. And we benefit <laughs> big time, hundred percent. Because it just ele- I mean, it literally elevated that whole concept. Because I remember the deck. You know, it, it was it wasn't like a featured area. We had a bar outside. Yeah, but it. It, it wasn't a place where you heard the, the music. Every, all the party was inside. And I feel like now it's like you're, you're bringing, you know, like kind of a, a, like an equal amount of attention to, to both, the, you know, the, the features, you know, the inside feature and the outside feature. Well, you brought up the um, Satellite PD and the, you know, the idea of, you know, driving out to the beach for a bar. Mm-hmm. You know, a couple of things, you know, I like to think about is, you know, if we're throwing the right party, right. If, we're th- if we have the right food, if we have the right atmosphere, um, number one, you will Uber there. You know, right. you'll want to be a part of that party. So that responsibility is on us. Right. Uh, and the other part is we want people to be safe. Safety is a huge priority to yeah. us. Right. Yeah. yeah, we don't want the you know the uh, the idea that people are coming to our place to get all messed up and then you know throwing them to satellite PD. <laughs> you right. know. Uh, and, that's not how you keep a good returning customer base either. Right. Not at all. <laughs> you know? We'll gladly um, pay for an Uber if somebody right. needs it. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, selfishly, we're in North S- Satellite Beach. We're mm-hmm. barely in Satellite Beach. <laughs> right. Come and see us. Like, right. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> so what was it about you getting into the kitchen that people should know? Like, what do you bring special? Because I know you've had a, an illustrious like time in, in different kitchens. Uh, we don't have to disclose. Uh but I know you always have like a, a good imagination and you, you love food. I say all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I do, but you know what I love uh, almost as much as I love creating and uh, being a part of uh, putting together a menu mm-hmm. is team building. And uh, okay. um, something that I've been lucky enough to do throughout my career is develop relationships. And that's what's been a big part of being able to put together this kitchen mm-hmm. is that the relationships that I put together has brought me um, someone that I've worked with in the past and uh, at a high level. Okay. And he has his own relationships. Alex Ewing has his own relationships. So he was able to bring a couple people with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and he understands the systems. Uh, he's a hothead, but uh, <laughs> but that's you know part of what I like about him. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, so the the team building atmosphere um, because when you're thinking about any grand culinary experience there's a lot that goes into it you know from prep to from thought to prep to execution Mm -hmm. and you know any anybody that says that they're doing it by themselves is a complete asshole (laughs) no kidding Um, so yeah i i love cooking i have dinner parties i have through the whole time i was teaching i'd invite people over and we'd have dinner parties and have a good time and everyone would say steve when are you getting back into restaurants yeah um but you're only as successful as your team um so i just want to throw it out to them no i i i i do commend you for mentioning that because most people 
don't really take the credit. Like I'm the exec chef and even my Sue and even everybody, you know, around me, you know, I lead them, but I don't give them credit. Like at the end of the day, it's my name on the menu, my name on the restaurant. And, you know, it's like, well, your staff is everything. You know, without a dishwasher, mm-hmm. you're not cooking anything because, you know, you need new pots and pans to cook. You're not, you right. know, they're not disposable pots and pans. Like you just don't <laughs> throw them away yeah. and get a new one, you know, like you. So, I mean, everybody has a, a, a duty. And Mm -hmm. and each of those duties requires respect. Nobody needs to, you know, get, uh, you know, feel like a superior to complex over anybody else, you know, because at the end of the day, I've seen a lot of dishwashers become some very good chefs, you know, and it's just a a matter of time. I've seen a lot of dishwashers become great chefs, and I've seen a lot of educated, great chefs not be able to, you know, work in a kitchen. Sure. They, They can cook their brains out on paper they they, <laughs> right. they, they, yes. they probably right. should move move somewhere else right. you know <laughs> like and be a part of you know those types of systems but um around here mm-hmm. uh you know we don't we're, we're not trying to be um you know full of ourselves. we want the we want the neighborhood we want high fives and hugs when people come in feel like that. home yeah absolutely um, so and that comes from us, right. you know, uh, so that we can bring that to our team and then our team can bring that to them. 100%. Exactly. To go further on that, though, his menu is all original. Mm-hmm. You can't get what he has on his food menu anywhere else. It's epic. Yeah. I, I, what, what inspires you as far as, like, some of the creations you've made? Uh, the, f- the food that's that I have on hand mm-hmm. to start with. When I got there, um, you know, we had this smoker. Mm-hmm. And we had these smoked meats, and it's like, okay, what? This is what I have right now. Let's investigate this and see what mm-hmm. we can do with it. Right. And uh, our smoked brisket cheesesteak is a very high seller right now. <laughs> it's <is> amazing. Uh, <laughs> um, but I like to think about, you know, what is, what does feel like home. Mm-hmm. Um, so we brought in a, uh, and I'm from North Chicago, so we do a lot of Italian beefs and stuff like that up there. Oh, yeah, that. And, uh, but I wanted to think, what is our version of that? Everyone right. wants a French dip or a, a beef, something like that. Sure. Uh, so I brought in pot roast, and we do a great pot roast sandwich. Uh, we also do a pot roast poutine, and, mm-hmm. and, and that's a high seller right mm-hmm. now. Um, so it's really more about... Uh, you know what do we have what is the audience we're looking at and how can we be a, you know feel like a part of it you know right. not not rise above it but be within it and uh that's what i'm looking at when i'm looking at the food excellent well the menu is in, is incredible um we're gonna go and transition to the mm-hmm. the bar uh welcome and uh tell us what what is your imagination is there a theme for the bar what, what, what is what is your main a- ambition for for your service well being as we have that huge wonderful tiki bar Mm -hmm. it makes it easy to come up with a a creative cocktail menu Mm -hmm. which i'm actually launching this weekend for our grand opening the new cocktail menu has a lot of different cocktails that you can't get anywhere else i made them all up myself Mm -hmm. they're interesting when you read it it sounds weird (laughs) but (laughs) it works with your palate right so i'm going tiki way so they're fun creative the the umbrellas, the colorful straws, the frozen drinks, ducks in your drink, little plastic ones, fun things like that. Well, that sounds exciting. Yeah. Now, are, is there any kind of, I mean, because you guys seem to be like pretty good partners. Are you guys looking at, you know, the menu for your drinks? Are you looking at the drinks for your menu? Like, are, are you guys doing any like kind of collabs? We work hand in hand yeah. very well with everything. I mean, based off of barbecue, it's kind of difficult to make a beverage with that but mm-hmm. we also support a lot of local businesses mm-hmm. so on my cocktail menu some of them are named after specific businesses mm-hmm. or specific bands mm-hmm. fun in that way well we all know that Stephen has a big reputation when it comes to music yes and we do know that the cove throughout all of its different whatever it was named or, or whatever management was was through it always seemed to have a stage a sound system good lights and people came there for for music what could people expect from the music routine like are you guys going to have like a a a band that comes like all the time like kind of like a resident band or are you guys going to keep rotating we're rotating but Mm -hmm. currently we have wednesday night is acoustic like an acoustic jam night from seven to ten um hosted by caddy and anders Mm -hmm. and then friday saturday sunday is our main focus on the bigger bands right so we have bands friday and saturday sunday it's more of an afternoon sunday fun day type thing from two to six so. Gotcha. Right after brunch. So yep. br- brunch goes right into music outside on the tiki bar. 
um, Cad, Caddy and Anders, you guys may know from Caddy Shack back in the day, yeah. ever, ever, for sure, uh, everywhere. Um, we also have Tommy Tuesdays, <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, kind of a punk rock night. You can come in and uh, hang out with with the two Toms and listen yep. to some punk rock. Uh, and we are, you know, we've been really focusing on getting the place. Uh, built to where we want to be and we're still working on that right. we, we have a great entertainment room and you will see some future um, tastings in that room um, between you know cocktails and food being paired um, so we do have some things like that coming up for future but right now we're looking at uh, you know grand opening you know our initial <laughs> setup and then we're going to start getting into a whole lot more specials and uh, yes. drinks and entertainment um, we're hoping for uh for our service industry night, getting into an open jam or something like that. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think a sin night is always something mm-hmm. that's. We have that. It's Monday fun. nights. Yeah. Monday night. Well, that's, that's smart. Oh, yeah. it's tonight. Yep. Oh, so we'll see you there. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, of course, um, you know, we, we wait, we've waited until we got news that you guys were having a grand opening mm-hmm. b- before we kind of shed light on this new concept. So, um, if you guys would like to share. What's going to be happening this weekend at your grand opening? Let's uh, let's dive in. What could people expect? Well, you want to take it, Steve, or you want me to? So Friday, uh, we have our 80s prom night party. Uh, <laughs> we're starting on the deck with little Lynn. Little Lynn from 5 to 9. 5.30 to 9.30. 5.30 mm-hmm. to 9.30. Um, and then we have uh, DJ... Hunter the DJ from 9 to 1. Yeah. Oh. So with the 80s prom... We would like people to come dressed up. We are holding a best dressed contest and an '80s dance move contest. <laughs> I, I'm I'm expecting with the, with the new movie <laughs> to see a bunch of Barbies out there. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and that's Friday night. Yep. That's Friday night. We uh, the Melbourne Chambers coming out to do a ribbon cutting. Um, so also it, Friday. Yeah, on Friday. Yep. What what five thirty or so. Uh, they'll be there around six thirty. Six thirty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because people look forward to those things, right? Yep. So we want to make sure. Are you guys? Is, is, can people expect like little samples or anything else going on? I do. I have um, some promos going on. I have Jameson and Malibu that will be there mm-hmm. passing out samples oh, for fun. everybody. Yes. And that'll be an all night thing. Mm-hmm. There's a Malibu Barbie, so that may tie in right right into the, uh, the 80s theme. Maybe you know, I can no. get her to dress up as <laughs> Malibu Barbie. <laughs> it's all coming together right now. Yeah, yeah right now. <laughs> that was a great idea. <laughs> so Malibu Jameson, um, the Melbourne Chamber, and that's going to kick off about 6.30, and then it just rolls right into the, the prom. Yeah, all you know, night long. Very cool. Yeah. Um, of course, we know what '80s is going to sound like, but what about the DJ? Uh, is that is he going to kind of continue with like, like remixes of '80s or just a, like other style uh, house hip hop? I believe that he's going to go more with '80s mashup type thing. Fun, okay, yeah. But so, if that's not happening, we right. will make it happen throughout <laughs> the evening, <laughs> however we need to. Exactly, exactly. What about uh, Saturday? Uh, Saturday we have uh, local band Switch. Uh, Fun, and, yeah. From 8 to 12, and then during the day, we have G-Man out on the Tiki Deck from 2 to 6. Man, you guys really are just cr- cramming Grand a Grand opening. In. Yeah. yeah, That's awesome. I mean, is there well, anything they, more left over for, for Sunday? Sunday? Yeah. We have Lights Out Project, which they're huge. Love L.O.P. Huge locally. Those are my boys. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're amazing. We have them on the Tiki Deck as well from 2 to 6. So, our, well, again, we'll run our brunch right into oh. uh, yep. Lights Out Project. Yeah. I, I think I know where I'll see everybody Sunday morning. Yeah. Probably hungover from hungover. Saturday yes, night. Yes, <laughs> and that's fine. We've got Bloody Marys. They'll fix you right up. Yeah. <laughs> really? You promise? Oh, yes. Because right. I like mine like extra spicy with horseradish, Tabasco, Pepperoncinis. We have all like, the I fun like stuff. A good spicy Old Bay Rim. Anyway, the best biscuits and gravy you'll have. I've heard about yes. these biscuits and gravy from people, and I and I'm you know that, that's a little more southern for me. I'm I'm like more of like a uh, a, a sweeter breakfast kind of guy. Like I want my like stack of pancakes or that you know French toast or something. We got French Ditto. toast. Ditto. And he's got jalapeno waffles. Jalapeno. Which, yeah. oh, those shocking. Are, are those the cornbread waffles I've heard about? Yeah, the jalapeno cornbread waffle. Oh, made so butter, good. Candied bacon. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that sounds... What a busy weekend, though. Yeah. Yes. So, so when, when do you guys sleep? <laughs> we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we barely had time for this. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. We don't leave the building often. Yeah. No, no. So, so it sounds like you're inviting all kinds of people 
like you know parents their yep. children i mean it's a it's a it's a family oh yeah we kind want of to cater to right? everybody yeah, yeah. Yeah, we w- you know, there, and you bring up a good point. There was a lot of people that have been in that said that they weren't comfortable bringing their uh, kids to the previous establishment. Mm-hmm. Um, but the way that things are changing around, they're feeling mm-hmm. much more comfortable, like it's a family neighborhood atmosphere. That's awesome. Yep. That's awesome. Is there going to be a pink Cadillac in the, the parking lot this <laughs> We're weekend? We're working on the Cadillac <laughs> situation currently. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have one there this weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There will be my red Monte Carlo, but uh, nice. But, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> but that's not Cadillac. So the so back to the, the music program. I, mm-hmm. I mean, Stephen, uh, I think most people will recognize you from uh, the Space Coast Music Fest. Um, are there going to be like out of town acts? Can can we expect like, or is it just going to be like a constant rotation of similar people that are just going to be like you know kind of on a regular circuit? Or well, right now we're looking into everything really, mm-hmm. um, especially uh, Friday nights. Right now are um, we're looking to bring in Smashing Pixies. Um, you know, some of, the, some of the tribute stuff is right. pretty fun. Uh, was just talking with uh, Rob over at 518. He mm-hmm. said he'd love to bring in, uh, like, Lenny Lashley and stuff, do some uh, d- acoustic uh, punk-type stuff. Um, you know, no drums, just acoustic stuff. And, uh, you know, and that's some old-school feeling. And yeah. w- a lot of people might not know, but, you know, all of Melbourne, Palm Bay, but Beachside has a pretty strong punk rock uh, history. Of course. Um, so, you know, Rob wants, kind of wants to be a part of that. You know, he's kind mm-hmm. of the godfather around here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's hoping that we can work something out there. But uh, Saturdays, we're looking for those big, um, you know, fun beach cover bands. Uh, same with Sundays. You mm-hmm. know, r- really, we just want to throw the party. Yeah. Right. You know, whatever's going to bring the party. Exactly. Uh, and, and safe and fun and all that, but whatever's going to bring the party. Right. Well, you guys definitely have. A so that's kind of a call to action. Yeah. You know, a bit. And I like you that. Know, you know, to those out there, you know, local or not, um, that want to play. Reach out. Mm-hmm. Reach out, but also bring it. Yep. I mean, you know, bring the crowd, bring it. Uh, we, you know, we want to support it. Right. Um, and anyone that knows me uh, knows what that means. Um, you know that I'm I'm pretty heavy into wanting to support local original music. Right. Agreed. Uh, so if we can do anything that's going to be fun, um, let's do it. Well, the I mean, you guys have a pretty good house system. Oh yes, we have an amazing, it's amazing, house right? And I remember the stage at. Ep- the previous concepts were like was located back but mm-hmm. is it has it been re- relocated we'd like to t- talk about like how, what people can expect when they walk in and how different it is uh yeah stage right when you walk in mm-hmm. uh, and you want to talk a little bit yep the stage is when you walk in mm-hmm. the front of the building rather than before it was in the back of the building right. so you walk in the dance floor is there mm-hmm. you see all the people dancing right. you go get comfortable at the back or at the bar and mm-hmm. you still have all the entertainment right in front of your face. Right. So whether you want to dance on the dance floor or not, you have plenty of room mm-hmm. and you can still be comfortable right. and enjoy yourself. Yeah, one thing I've always enjoyed about the uh, that location is also just tons of parking. Mm-hmm. Like yes. there's, like, it's like probably one of the most generous parking. And, and again, it does have a lot of square footage. Um, and I know there was talk of like, having like a little separate thing in the back because there's always been that back entrance is that room going to be utilized for something yes so we got a bunch of games that were back there mm-hmm. out gotcha. and we're going to take down the wall oh, okay to open it up more put some booths in the back we're kind of throwing around ideas currently right. but i'm thinking putting another bar back there so that you have options everywhere you go in the building yeah there's also oh, another awesome. bar in what we're calling our vip lounge oh, okay so i'm currently booking parties for that Oh, okay. It's a separate room, very private, comfortable, right? separated from the normal bar. Right, right. So it's a lot going on. No, I could tell. <laughs> like, you guys have like lots of plans going on. Yes. And, th- and those listening out there, you mm-hmm. may not think it's too close, but Christmas parties are right around. Yep. Uh, very true. Let us know how we can help. Yeah, because um, everybody 
nowadays, like that's just the easiest thing. Mm-hmm. Instead of like passing around gifts or yes. or trying to host it at the office, which is not built to have a party. Right. Correct. Like, let's be honest, you know, and then and then you have to hire the music. You have to hire, you know, the catering. Whereas if you just book where everything all all those things already exist, right? Exactly. You know, it makes all that you know you don't have to clean up. Uh, you know, afterwards, like it's it, it it solves a lot of problems. It does. And, and, and the room has its own bar. It has its own. Uh, steam table set up so we can do food catering That's uh, awesome. it's yeah. a, it's definitely a spot for you to have your own uh, event without it bleeding into what everything else is going on and this this sounds exciting I'm really excited about some some of these uh, new cocktails that, that you're, you're you're thinking of they're a lot of fun yeah you will see a lot of photos of them because they are going to be that you right. want to take a picture of the way it looks because you don't see it anywhere else in this town right it's uh, exciting. No, I, I, I really enjoy it. And it sounds like, you know, between both of you, you know, with all the experience that you guys have, like this is just the beginning. Yep. Oh, this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very much just the beginning. Right. We, we we had the benefit, the opportunity to take over a great space mm-hmm. that came with uh, a decent amount of regulars. Right. And we've been taking care of those regulars, and we right. love doing that. But we were starting to make the turn to really bring us to where we want to be yep. right along with them but where we want to be so we we brought out some stuff that was familiar mm-hmm. even the menu reflects some stuff that was familiar right um and we're going to keep making that transition to where uh where we want our standards our levels our cuisine to be i, I like I, li- I like this a lot this, is, this has been a good conversation and any any parting words before you guys uh i mean like else? he said before bring mm-hmm. it <laughs> Bring it. Yeah. Bring it. We're ready. I like that. Um, and so let's remind everybody, Friday. Correct. Party starts at 5, five, five 5.30. 30. With uh, Lil Lynn on the deck. And we're going to transition right into our ribbon cutting and our 80s party inside with Hunter the DJ. Mm-hmm. All night until 1 o'clock. Yep. And then Saturday, more fun. Sunday, brunch, lights out project. Yep. Closing it out. Yep. Switch on Saturday. Oh, Lights man. out project on Sunday. Uh, it should yeah. it should be a good time. Um, for, for those people that are curious, is, is it smoking vape friendly uh, on the DQ deck? We have a full smoking section in the mm-hmm. back Okay. with three tables set up. Okay. The ashtrays are out there. It's separated from the rest. It's right behind the stage that is on the tiki deck. Okay. So. So. If you like a cigar, if you like a cigarette, there's plenty of places to enjoy it because it is a large deck. I mean, there, there's enough yes. space to, to spread out and and so forth. And uh, again, family friendly, booster seats, everything else is accommodated for. So yep. there's a cho- children's menu and all that, right? Yep. Yep. Well, there you go. I I think you guys answered all all, all my questions on my list. But uh, no, really, thank you so much for for coming in. This is thank been a you delight. for having us. Well, Appreciate it. Well, you're gonna have me all weekend. So <laughs> yes, cool. we're we're gonna party big time. All right, guys. Cadillac until next Cove. time, this has been a delicious podcast. Thank you guys so much from Cadillac Cove. We'll see you this weekend. Parties, parties, parties. I can't parties. wait. All right, till yes. next time. Take care. <laughs>